years ago, after turning 40, I, was, I lost a lot of money in a project, and I got stuck in a rut, mental rut. And I couldn't believe that I'm back to where I was like 20 years ago. So I came across this topic, subject, called cognitive behavior. And I said, wow, that's the problem I have. So rather than going to therapy or coaching, I said, let me learn about it. So I signed up at the London Association of Psychologists and committed to eight months training. That meant I became my first client. I said, fantastic. So what I'm going to share today is what I learned, but then how I kind of molded it in a way that I can easily explain it. Because I feel that if we learn this when we're young, trust me, life will be so much easier. So I'm 51. If I learned this when I was 20, mate, honestly, fantastic. And this is why I like sharing it. And I share it with kids and kids of my friends. And I try to make it easy. So today it's about fun as well. I think it's easy, but let's see. But I need your help. So, I'm not a big fan of a lot of text of slides, but I want you to understand. So the way we're going to do it is read it, but then switch to me, okay? With a stronger mindset, you're ready for the future by being ready today, okay? You're going to get more effectiveness, more resilience, and more adaptability. Because for the future, we need to adapt. We need to be flexible. We need to adapt to situations, what life is going to throw to us. Because everything is temporary, the good and the bad. Okay? And this I learned, I was in a retreat in Italy, and they were talking about thinking and problems and mindset, and it dawned on me. And I came up with this quote, and it's, I think I came because I never saw it written before. So. When there is clarity, we don't need to think. Think about it. If everything is clear, your mind is not boggled. And this is the state I am today, because I've practiced. So when I'm given a situation or a problem, it's filed. Honestly, I don't need to think. I used to think that I think a lot. I used to tell people, I think in my sleep. I wake up and I come up with this. That was noise. That was not thinking. Because when there's clarity, we don't need to think. So if you have to think a lot about something, you don't have clarity. Because mental clarity is a state where you're more focused. You're able to recognize, understand, and organize your thoughts seamlessly. So the premise of cognitive behavior is this. This is how we start. The way we think determines the way we act, feel, and behave. So much so, I can tell you today, feel angry. What do you have to do? Think of something that makes you feel angry. Feel annoyed. Feel relaxed. That's the power of our head. So it's not the situation or the problem that makes us act, feel, or behave in a situation. If you're a couple and in a relationship, it's not your couple, partner, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, mom, dad, whoever, brother, sister, that makes you act, feel, and behave in a certain way. It's how you are processing the situation. Got it? Yes. Clear? So, so much so that people with similar problems react differently. They have exactly the same situation. They react differently because they process it differently. Given any problem, we need to first focus on how we are thinking about the problem and not the problem itself. The biggest mistake we do, given a situation, a challenge, a problem, whatever, we go in solution mode. You're not in a state to think of solutions. You're going to decide on solutions on the rank premise because you don't have the clarity. So first, stop, withdraw. How am I thinking about it? How am I processing it? And I'm going to tell you how. So today it's not just talk. I'm going to give you tips, okay? 
about your inner voice. At around seven or eight, kids discover their inner voice. And that's when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> that's when self-doubt, insecurities kick in and everything. The inner voice is something that makes us human, which brings us, make, do amazing things in the world, but can also set us back. So when a child doesn't have an inner voice, that concept, it's flawless, there's no filter, but that inner voice, once it kicks in, and girls get it before, I think, that's why they're more advanced as well, <laughs> then we eventually catch up. So what goes wrong in your head? I said it before, it's not thinking, it's noise. Some of it is good, but the bulk is noise. And this noise is obviously influenced by a lot of factors. Your past, upbringing, experiences, society around you, social media, internet, and whatever. And your inner voice is not always right. Agreed? First of all, does everyone have an inner voice in this room? Yeah? Anyone that doesn't? Yeah, cool. Anyone that their inner voice is always right? No. Maybe. If our inner voice is not always right, you agree that we need to question everything before we accept it, and this is the problem we have. Since we think that what goes in here is us, and it's thinking, we automatically accept it, okay? Since we accept it, it makes us act, feel, and behave in a certain way. So I'm going to give you a hack how to question it automatically before accepting it. All right? Because the way we think determines the way we act, feel, and behave. Step one. I thought it was going to be fun. Imagine that you have a monkey in your head. So your inner voice is your monkey telling you stuff. So Josh is out somewhere, or he sends a pitch to a sponsor. He doesn't get a reply. Nothing dead. His monkey might tell him nothing. They don't like it. They're not interested. Blah, 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 blah. Correct? But that's not your inner voice. You see? After today, you know it's your monkey. Some rules of the game. You only have one monkey. Because I meet people, I have six monkeys, I have seven monkeys. <laughs> no. You only have... I told you I've been around, I heard this before. You only have one monkey in your head. And you have... The, bad news, good news, you have the same monkey all your life. Okay? You can't get rid of your monkey. You can't give me your monkey, it's your monkey. But... Why is it a monkey? Because a monkey can be playful, caring, but they can be aggressive and unpredictable, you know? It's not a loyal dog you have up there, it's a monkey. They're cute, but wait till a monkey bites you. Yeah. So the monkey can be your best friend or your biggest enemy, okay? Your monkey can help you, encourage you, set you back or create self-doubt. And some monkeys are fantastic at that, you know, to create self-doubt. But you can train your monkey. You can train your monkey. And I'm going to show you how. But it will still remain a monkey, okay? You're not going to turn your monkey into a dog or something else. So, let's make the monkey a reality and give it a name. This is a tip that really helped me. My monkey is called Ben. <laughs> so why talk? No one is called Ben, am I? Yeah? No? Sorry. So why? Why does it help me? Because automatically, by giving it a name, I'm making the monkey a reality. And I can relate to Ben. And I'm going to show you how we need to relate to the monkey. So come up, choose your monkey, choose the sex. Could be gender neutral, him, they, his, her, whatever. <laughs> we. Sorry, I lose track. There's nothing wrong with that. But give it a name, okay? Give it a name. And you might find yourself that you're not happy with the name, but eventually you'll find the right name and stick to that name. So that's your monkey. <laughs> Step two. 
Now, if a monkey tells you something, imagine monkeys can talk, and you're here today, you're in the office, you're somewhere, and the monkey can tell you something. Will you believe a monkey or do what the monkey tells you? If the monkey tells you, you're so ugly, <laughs> you're so stupid, you're so stupid. That pitch was horrendous. The boss is never, the client is never going to come back to you. The, the CEO hates you. The CEO wants to fire you. If a monkey tells you that, will you believe it? No. But forget this. Till today, if you hear that, you're in a voice, will you believe it? Yes. Now, the monkey might be right <coughs> as well. So I'm not saying the monkey is always wrong. Because the monkey sometimes helps us, gives us encouragement, edges us on, helps us celebrate. But the question is, when is the monkey right or when is the monkey wrong? So this is why you have to question. So, this we agreed on. Obviously, we said this. It's a monkey. So whenever the monkey tells me something, anyone chose a name yet? Uh, yeah. Mike. Mike. Coco. Huh? Coco. Coco? Okay. Coco. Ah, Coco. <laughs> so, whenever Coco, whenever Mike tells you something, you're going to question it and ask, okay? Now, before accepting it, so what's the questions we're going to ask? And there are three questions, three main questions. Remember these. You sent a proposal to management, board of directors, or a client, or whatever, and you got no reply at all. Does it happen? Now, what happens when you don't get a reply? What goes on? What does your monkey tell you? It's your, your, huh? it's your fault. They're assholes. They're not interested. Not good enough. You're going to fail. What else? Yeah? Yeah. Now, how does that make you feel? Worse. Stay with me. Bad. How does that make you act? You freeze. You don't do anything. You feel demotivated. You know? Got it? So, when the monkey starts telling you that, so you send the pitch, the proposal, you got no reply, two, three, four days, and the monkey starts throwing shit. He's like, I'm going to have some fun today. <laughs> and starts blabbing because he wants to play. <laughs> you, you're not going to accept what the monkey tells you, and you're going to ask this question to the monkey. Hey, Ben, what is the proof that it's shit? What is the proof that I'm hopeless? What is the proof that I'm going to fail? What is the proof that they don't like my proposal? And the monkey suddenly is caught unawares and says, well, mm, <laughs> you're right. It's true. There's no proof. But the only proof you have is he didn't get back to you. Fine. But that's the only proof I have. I didn't get a reply. You see? And the monkey starts calming down. And then you're on a road, so you go, question two. And by the way, monkey, is it logical to assume that if they didn't get back to me, to my pitch, I'm going to fail and it's crap? And the monkey goes, shit, here we go. <laughs> Got me here. <laughs> True. It's not logical because sometimes people don't reply straight away. And the monkey comes down. And you're feeling stronger now. And you go, and by the way, monkey's thinking like this, helping me. No. no. And what happens suddenly? The monkey goes away. Have you ever been awake three in the morning with thoughts in your head? Yes. And what happens when you try to shut them up? Yes. They don't. They get worse. Yes. I think we're not asking the right questions. So if you ask the right questions, the monkey will shut up. So imagine you do it once, twice, three, every day. The monkey eventually will be trained. You still get those moments, but it has to become a habit. So you have to practice. But it doesn't stop here. So you don't fight with your monkey. You just question it. You play with it. It's like a dance. Because if you fight something, it's going to become a monster, OK? And he's your monkey all your life, so you can't fight with him. You need to train him or her. Got it? <coughs> Step three. I'm 
consider myself very realistic and effective. I'm not into positive thinking. It's good, but I'm more into effective thinking. Okay? We need to be effective. Positive thinking is hoping for the best sometimes. It's not enough, especially in the world we live in. So we need still to do a reality check. So the pitch, we didn't get a reply. We calmed the monkey, okay? We calmed him down. There's no proof, I'm crap, blah, blah, blah. Calm down. But I want you to go further. And you ask yourself question four. And what is the worst case scenario? Really, if they didn't get back to me, if I don't get this pitch, what is the worst case scenario? Whatever the situation, if a relationship doesn't work, okay, there might still be some truth in that. The monkey might still be true, but what is the worst case scenario? And you will find yourself transporting yourself to the worst case scenario and sometimes you realize, then I'll deal with it. And the monkey comes down again because you're going gold trail now and tell him, so what? Even if it happens, what's the worst case scenario? But I want you to go further. We'll come up with the way forward because we can't the monkey now. And if we can't can the monkey, now we can start thinking effectively. Got it? Before we were into an estate, if we didn't calm the monkey, what do you do? Ah, oh, shut up, leave it, I said, do nothing. Even if you meet the boss or the client, you're closed, you know. So now we have to go into way forward. Solutions. Question five, brainstorm. What are all of my possible options? So in the case of the pitch, so do I call him? Do I call my friend who works with him? Do I send a reminder? Do I call? List them all, okay? List all your options. So we're in effective mode. No filter, this is good or bad for now. List all my options. Before we were freeze, kind of, we're doing nothing, we're closing up, we're depressed, we're sad, we feel bad. So now you feel, okay, what can I do? And step five, be effective. Choose from all your options the one you feel comfortable doing. Say, so you know what, actually, I don't want to call him because it's pushy. I'll wait two days, send another email, send another WhatsApp. Or call, I have a contact in that company, hey, can you check if they got my pitch? Yeah. Now, that in a way can make things happen because you're being proactive, got it? Whereas if we did nothing because we thought we failed, we're not helping the situation either. But now you're more confident because we already addressed the fact, worst case scenario doesn't happen, so what? But this is my option, I'm going to go with it and see what happens. So, final takeaways. Remember, given any problem, don't try and come into solutions. First focus, how am I processing this? What is my monkey telling me? Can I question my monkey? Can I calm him down? And then we go into solutions. Humans are, are wired to try and fix. We don't need to fix everything straight away. Calm down, take a step back, see how we're processing that. Secondly, when we calm the monkey, then yes, go into solution mode. Because only when there is clarity, we don't need to think. So good luck with your monkey, make it your friend, give it a name, and start this journey of, of clarity and effective thinking, and your future is gonna be bright. Thank you. Yeah.